Hello, and welcome to the first video of Section 2. We have understood what WebRTC is, and we are ready without development environment. This section will teach you the very basic elements you need to know to build your WebRTC application. We will learn how to use the Get User Media API, Peer Connection Method, and Session Description Protocol. In this video, we are going to talk about the main JavaScript elements for providing WebRTC services, from capturing your local media to sharing it with whomever you want, just by using a few JavaScript functions. As we have already said, WebRTC provides a JavaScript API, an abstraction layer for reaching media and connecting to other peers in order to send data and media streams. So the first main function we'll take a look into would be obtaining the media streams from your camera, microphone, and screen. These streams can be accessed using Get User Media. This is the first method that we'll study. Another important element of this API is the class RTC Peer Connection, which supports the connection between the different peers involved in the Web RTC session. It is used to handle efficient streaming of data between two peers. We already have our local streams and a connection. The next step will be to share them with another user, one or more people. But there's a problem to deal with before we dive into it. Since browsers have different capabilities, a negotiation is needed between all the implied peers to properly establish the sharing parameters of their streams. This will be done through SDP, or Session Description Protocol. It describes the media streams in a text format. We'll be studying it in detail in the video 4 of this section. The peer starting the communication has to obtain his media SDP and send it to the other peers using the method createOffer. Once a peer receives this SDP, he would have to call the method createAnswer. You may have noticed that we spoke about sending the SDP, but WebRTC doesn't define how to do it. It's out from its scope. This is one of the reasons for which signaling is needed. The process will be explained in detail in section 3, but let's briefly introduce it. This process of signaling is called ICE exchange, where ICE stands for Interactive Connectivity Establishment. In it, the peers use different types of servers as relays, because as an internet client, your IP address is private, for instance. Those servers help you translate your IP and your peers too. In this video, we've covered how the user can reach his local video and audio, which object represents the connection between peers, the methods for negotiating some parameters before calling, and finally, we've anticipated the ICE problem, related to how peers can find each other. In the next video, we'll go deeper in how to use the getUserMedia method, making it work on an easy example. Stay tuned.